is a video about perspective drawing. It is actually quite technical and there are a lot of rules. So to prepare for this video, I did 20 hours of perspective drawing. A lot of work, as you can see here. But this video is not going to focus on my experience of that. This video is going to be a tutorial because for you to get perspective drawing, I need to explain all the rules. And I am going to do that in the simplest way possible. So without further ado, strap in your seatbelt because things are about to get a little bit technical. Take a deep breath, people, and listen up. I'm doing this 20 hours of perspective drawing along with a course I found on lynda.com. The course is called Sketching for Product Design. It's an incredibly good course. It is incredibly technical, which is good because it explains all of the rules, the geometry, and all of the things that go in behind perspective drawing. So if you're going to do your own 20 hours, you need to do it along with that course. I'll put a link to it in the description below. So the first thing you need to understand is two-point perspective drawing. Now this is the perspective that the vast majority of designers use to draw. Number one, you have your horizon line, which is this blue line here. And then you have your two perspective points, which is here and here. Now to create perspective, all your horizontal lines will go back to those respective points, as you can see. That one goes there. If I continue this line out, it will go to the right hand perspective point. Same with this back line. If I continue out, it goes there as well. And if I draw all these lines out, you will see that they all go back to the same two perspective points. So to practice that, get yourself a ruler, draw your horizontal lines or two thirds up the piece of paper, and then just start drawing a cube. But continue the horizontal lines all the way to the perspective point, and you'll get an idea of what two point perspective is. So for the next couple of hours, just practice drawing cubes and rectangles. Just get it until you get familiar with the process. If you're doing it digitally, like I am, there's a great perspective tool in Sketchbook. And something that I like to do is I set the perspective points beyond the page, which adds for a more realistic perspective. Now the next step to draw in perspective is to do it without having to put in your horizon line and drawing your horizontal lines all the way to your two points. The idea is you want to imagine those and then just do it by hand. So, to draw a cube in two point perspective without having to put in those extra things, I have come up with three simple rules for you to follow. So when you draw on your first two lines, that is you setting your perspective for the rest of the drawing. So when you put in this line here and then this line here, that angle sets your perspective. Rule number one is this, the smaller your angle is in here, the further away your object is from the horizon line. And the bigger your angle is, like so, See how that angle is bigger? The closer you are to the horizon line. So setting that first angle is vastly important. If you want to look down on an object, like it's sitting on a table, like a teacup or something, you pull it further away from the horizon line, that gives you the idea of that you're looking into it, looking down. But if you want to look sort of straight on at an angle, or even if it's slightly taller than you, you want it to be closer to the horizon line and even exceed the height of the horizon line. Now, that brings me to rule number two. All your horizontal lines have to converge in a V shape. So, for example, if I was to draw this line here, and then this line down here, all the way up to the vanishing point, they would eventually meet like a V. V, meet like a V. And that is for all of your horizontal lines that go towards the vanishing point. If you were to draw that out, that would eventually go into a V, and if you draw that out, eventually go into V. If they don't meet at some point in the, if you draw them out, you will instantly be able to see that your perspective is off and that's an easy way to tell. Now rule number three is all of your vertical lines must be parallel. And by parallel, what it means is you have one line that goes straight up, the other line also goes straight up, they never meet. So for example, all your vertical lines go straight up, always, like so. Right, now that you know how to draw the cube, it's now time to learn how to split and subdivide that cube. So to do that, we've got to use diagonal lines. Now this is a part of design drawing that often doesn't get as much glory as it should. So let me explain the power of the diagonal line and midpoints. Here we go. 
So when drawing in perspective, one of your most important parts is the center line or center point. And the way you find that is through diagonals. What you do is you draw one diagonal line to the other corner and one diagonal line to the other corner and boom, you have your center point right there. And now that you have your center point, you can easily get your center line and it is smack bang in the middle of the cube no matter what perspective it's at. And from that, we also know that that's the center of the side and the center of that side. And we can also tell that we can find the center point on the top of the cube just by doing that simple diagonal on the bottom. And not only can you divide it once, you can also divide it into quarters. Just simply put another diagonal in the smaller cube and boom, you found the center point there or the quarter of the square. And you can just keep subdividing until you can't subdivide anymore. But what happens when you want to extend the cube? What if you want to put the exact same size cube right next to the other in perspective? How do you do that? Well, let's use the sidewalk as an example. We know each piece of concrete is the exact same in size. So how do you draw it in perspective? Draw your two side lines down the side of the sidewalk and then section off one of the squares of concrete. Now find the center point of that square using diagonals and draw your center line. Now, Draw another diagonal line from the top corner and draw it across so it meets in the center line of your final line like so and the point where it ends up is the distance of the next square of concrete. Now it's time to start drawing tons and tons of low poly shapes. Basically the rules out here is you can't use any curved lines or anything like that. So just using straight lines, start drawing some random shapes and just do it I'm going to do it for the next two hours. So drawing simple geometric shapes, get used to using these new perspective rules. Draw on your center points and your diagonal lines to find the center points of everything. Like so. So hopefully now you've been drawing boxes for a little bit and you're starting to get the hang of it. Now the second shape you need to learn is the cylinder which is made up of circles. Once you can draw these two shapes you can basically in theory draw any product because Every product is basically just made up of these shapes. So to understand the ellipse, we first need to understand the circle. So here is a coin. If I hold it straight onto the camera, it looks like a circle, a perfect circle. But when I start rotating it at 90 degree angle, it's starting to look more like an ellipse, as you can see. And if I was to write it to a full 90 degrees, it basically just looks like a line. Now if I was to animate it, it would look like this. So what is happening is the vertical line foreshortens, but the horizontal line stays the same. An ellipse has a minor and major axis. So the short line connecting the shortest part of the ellipse is called your minor axis. That little red line there, that's your minor axis. And then your major axis is the line that connects the two longest parts of the ellipse, that line there. And the important thing you need to keep in mind is that these two lines are always, always perpendicular to each other. Now to draw a cylinder, all you got to do is put two vertical lines on the edge of the major axis, like so. And then draw in another ellipse at the top. The only important thing you need to keep in mind here is that one of the ellipses is going to be slightly foreshortened because of perspective. From your viewpoint, the surface that is further away from the eye is always going to seem bigger. Think of it like a car parking building. You're always going to see more of the bottom floor than you are the top. So when it comes to drawing horizontal cylinders, what you want to do is create a box and find the midpoint. We already know how to do this. And now the only difference is that our minor axis runs along the perspective line. So it runs along that midpoint, that orange line there. And because we know that the major axis is at a perpendicular to the minor axis, we can draw that in like so, and we can find the dimensions for our circle, like so. And then just draw two more lines along the perspective line and draw a smaller cylinder at the back and presto, you have a horizontal cylinder. Alrighty, so so far we have learnt how to draw a cube, we have learnt how to draw a cylinder and we have learnt how to subdivide and find the midpoint and midline of things. The last rule you need to learn is midsection cutouts. These are incredibly handy. So let me explain with la app. This line that you see, this shape, this me, that is our midsection cutout. And now what we want to do is we want to find a plane in the middle of our product and we want to draw the outline of just that single plane. Let me show you how to do this. Alright, start by drawing yourself a cube like so and find yourself the midpoint and draw a mid plane on that midline. 
Now, just put in the top two circles like so, and now connect those circles with sort of the section cut out. So see that's kind of like the 2D outline of the bottle. Then we draw another plane that is perpendicular to the last one, and we repeat the process, this time just sort of drawing the 2D version of the width of the bottle, like so. Then this gives us sort of an easy framework to work around to draw our outline. And you can sort of begin to see uh, volume. Then if you feel so inclined, add a bit of color and shading, which just really brings it out. Now putting it all together, the drawing process has four steps. Number one is always draw your drawing in orthographic view first. These drawings are super helpful to understand the product and are much easier to begin sketching with. And they're super useful for when you go to 3D for getting the details in the correct place and things like that. All right, now we hit the 3D. So your first step of 3D is your ghost lines. These are your lines that you use to get all of your perspective in. You draw your rough shapes first and that sort of thing. That's what we've been learning. Then number two are your outlines. These are the important lines that show the shape, it sort of brings it together. Then you bring in your contour lines. This sort of shows how the surface is curving and that sort of thing. They add little details. And that's basically it. <laughs> now I just thought it'd be useful to end this video with a full speed drawing of what this process looks like. Now this is me adding in my ghost lines. The idea is you just want to get in the perspective that you'll need. Put in as few lines as possible but all that you need to get in your geometry to figure it out. Now I'm doing a midsection cutout of the handle. This sort of gives me an idea of what it's going to look like. Just thought I'd add a few circles to show the width of the prongs. And then another circle to show the a guideline of what the prongs will follow across. Like so. Now using these ovals I'm doing another cross-section cutout but in the opposite direction like that. It sort of gives me the width of the handle. Now I can start doing the outline like so. And it's starting to come together. Now I'm going to do the contour lines just so you can read the surface a bit better. And I just realized I forgot to give this grader a blade. So there's the blade. And now I'm just going to give a quick color because I think things look so much better once they're colored in. And there it is, all together. I'm quite happy with that. Alright, so I hope you found this video helpful. Now, I am in no way an expert at this, and I'm very much still learning, as you can see from a few of my drawings. They're not perfect. So, what I recommend is, if you're going to do your 20 hours on perspective drawing, which I highly recommend you should, definitely follow it along with the Linda course, which I'll link to in the description below. In that course, the author goes into far more detail into all of the geometry and the explanations behind everything that I can in this short little YouTube video. So definitely do that alongside your 20 hours. Now, as you can see from this video, I love digital drawing over physical drawing. So I use Sketchbook, which is the software here, and you, if you are a student, you can actually get this for free. I'll put a link in the description below. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you found this useful. Please give it a thumbs up, that really helps. And please consider subscribing, as that would be grand. And I will see you next week. Adios, people.